This is Gemara in Ksubis, Daf Ayin Dalit. All the learned this month, the month of Elul, has been generously sponsored as a Zchos Eli Neshama, Faster Rizal Basra Meir, Mir Tashem. The learning of the Yidar Chabura, which Baruch Hashem is been growing day by day, daf by daf, should bring us to Rizal Basra Meir to an higher, higher in place in Ganeidin Shel Maila. And just a heads up that Baruch Hashem will the Shirim are back up on time, back up on all the available platforms, and hopefully soon enough they will as well be back with the full video, etc. So we finished yesterday on the bottom of Ayin Dalim and Beis, in which we quoted a Mishnah. The Mishnah said, mishom neder. If someone divorces his wife due to a fact that there's a neder, lo yachzir, shem shem lo yachzir, lo yachzir, yachzir. And then Rameir said, And then Ravaliezer said, So we have a machlaikas, Rameir and Ravaliezer, which is the reason that we brought down this Mishnah, as which we're going to see in a minute is going to prove to us what, that Rameir and Ravaliezer disagree as to whether Adam writes that his wife is I shouldn't say a person, no one wants their wife to be embarrassed in Bezdin, but a person does not mind, I should say, if his wife is embarrassed in Bezdin. That's going to be that which we're going to prove for this mission in a moment. But before we prove that, we want to delve for a moment into the Shita of Reb Yehuda. Reb Yehuda said, Kol neder she yadu by Rab, many neder that the public knows about, lo yachzir, but she ain't a, excuse me, but lo yadu by Rabim, but if the public does not know about it, then yachzir. So ask the Gemara, my time of Rabbi Yehuda. What is this reason of Rabbi Yehuda? The Pasik says, as we turn over to Ayin Hei Omer Alf, says the Pasik proving the sheet of Rabbi Yehuda, that it depends on whether the public knows about it. And Klai Yisrael did not kill the Gevainim, why not? Because the leaders had made a shvua to them. Says the Gemara, what do we see in this part? Po- po- and so here we see something that it means that the Rabbim knew about it. So first Gemara says, Kama Rabbim. How many people? Rav Nachman Yitzhak Amr Shloisha. Yamim. Shnayim. Excuse me. Rav Nachman Yitzhak Amr Shloisha. Then what does it mean? Many days is three. How do I know that? Because Yamim is Shnayim. And Rabbi Mishlaisha, the most many is three, and Rabbi Tzikamar Asara is Eida Ksev Bo. Rabbi Tzik says no, it really means ten, because in this pasuk we see that it says Ki Nishvul and Nisiha Eida, and the Nisiha Eida made a shvur to them. From there we see that it's referring to Eida, which isn't just a plural. But rather, is more than plural, and rather it's referring to a multitude of ten. So once we prove the Shita of Rabbi Yehuda, we go back to why we brought down this Mishnah in the first case, which is the Machleik Ezra Meir and Rabbi Yehuda. So says the Gemara, first repeating their Shitas, Rabbi Yehuda, 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 Says Rameir, he does not mind if a woman has to embarrass herself in Bezdin. And again, the Nakuda, the detail here being that she's going to go to Bezdin in order to be made fair to annul the nether that was made. And since Rameir is of the opinion that he does not mind if a woman suffers such a disgrace, therefore the husband can say that the second marriage is no longer. Why not? Because he could say that if he would have known that she could get rid of the neder, he would not have divorced her. And therefore, in order to make sure that the husband will never mess up a future marriage, therefore they made a that the husband is never allowed to remarry this woman. That's the sheet of Rameir. But Rav Lazar, Aymer, Rav Lazar, Saber, Eidon, Rav Lazar says, no, about eight lines down, the first word line is, Savar, a man is not willing to have his wife be embarrassed in Bezdin, and therefore, the husband, if he divorced her, we say that he would divorce her whether or not she would actually go to Bezdin and have her neder be made for. Why? Because he never wants such a scenario to happen. And therefore, do we have to make a gizera that a future marriage 
is not tenable? The answer is no. The reason is because we're not worried that the husband will come with such a claim. So we're learning that is the machlik or maiden of Allah, or whether a husband minds if his wife is embarrassed in court. And whether the, the husband minds dictates whether we have to be concerned that a future marriage will be ruined by the husband. And this really is the end of a long and lengthy answer how Rabbah reconciled the two Brysais, that the Brys that said that the Chachamib say that if she no, no longer has a Nadar, the Kedushin is a good Kedushin, that is a sheet of Rameir. Why? Because he doesn't mind if his wife goes to court to be made for the Ned. Whereas the price that says that the condition is not good is Rabbi Lazar, that a man never wants his wife to have to go and, and suffer the embarrassment of going to Bezdin. After concluding the answer of Rabbi, Rabbi Amar Anu Teretz, Hacha Bisha Chashubas, Kinon says Rabbi, the second price that says that the condition is not good even if the Chachamim find a way to get rid of her nether. What's the reason? Because we're dealing with an Isha Chashuva, a Chashiv, a prominent woman, and therefore what? And interesting detail. The husband says, and actually we should take this with Rashi. Let's take a moment to look at Rashi. A few lines, uh, two lines at the top of the Amr of Isha Chashuva, Bas Kedayla. Kedaylim, a woman from a Chashev family, explains Rava, even someone that doesn't necessarily mind that his wife is embarrassed in court, but in a scenario in which the woman is a Chashev woman, in such a scenario, the husband is going to say, I never wanted such a wife, and I also don't want to get, why? Because if he gives this woman a get, Allah is, he can never marry. A person is never let him marry, he's divorced his mother or sister. And because this woman comes from a Chashva family, she never wants to um, cut these Chashva women off from potential marriages. And therefore the husband says, I don't want the Kedushin to ever have been Chal. That is the case that even if the Chacham could find her, a reason to get rid of the Nadar, still the Kedushin is not going to be a good Kedushin. Whereas the other Bryce that says that if the Chacham could get rid of her Nadar, that's talking about a woman who's not a Chashab woman, therefore the husband doesn't mind necessarily being cut off from her family. Ask the Gemara, Yachi, if this is true, Zeva Dektani Avalu, Shalich Hazel Chacham, Yitira. Ask the Gemara, the second Bryce, if you're telling me it's talking about a case of a Chashab woman, but then the seifa of that price is difficult. Because the seifa says, If he married her with a tonight, that he, not that she has no nadarim, but rather he makes a tonight that he has no nadarim, or has no physical mumim. And then he went, the husband goes, and gets rid of that nadar. Or the husband goes, and he indeed had a mom, but he goes and he takes care of the mom. Mikudashas, the lachas are married. So asks the Gemara, listening, Eino Mikudashas, why don't we say that according to Rava, even in this case, even if the Chacham was able to get rid of the Nedar, we should say they're not married, why not? Meaning, he made the marriage totally dependent upon the nether. He got rid of the nether. So we're saying everything is fine. Ask the Gemara, I don't understand. We should say the same thing. We should say, Why? Because it's an Adam Chashev. The Omra. Because now she's going to claim, I don't want to be us or on his relatives. Just like the husband. He's allowed to come along and say, No, even though she got rid of the nether, I don't want to give a get. Because I want the eventual possibility of being able to marry this woman's mother, this woman's sister, because it's such a chashva family. So ask the Gemara, why don't we say the same thing in reverse? Why don't we say the same thing that the woman wants to be able to marry his relatives? And therefore, if he got rid of the Nadarim, it should still not be a good marriage. Answers the Gemara, A woman is happy with anything. famously says, the attitude of a woman is 
It's better two bodies than one. Any form of marriage is better than nothing. Abaya Amar, another way of restating the same point of Rach Luggage, the Shumshim Agavar Korsei, Becharate Ramila. Even if the husband is literally as short as an ant, she's still happy because she can place her chair amongst women who are married. Rababa Amar, a similar statement. Dinafsam Gavra, a woman whose husband comes wool, meaning he has a lowly profession. Bey, Dinafsam, excuse me, Dinafsam Gavra. Tikrei b'sifei bava detesif will call to him and sit with him on the doorstep. She won't be embarrassed to sit with her husband because she feels at least I'm married. That's better than anything else. Ravashi Amar in the last narrow line they call Sagavra lebay talvchayo lekidra. A woman who husband has a yichos which is tainted, he might not have a chash of a yichos. Still, lebay talavchel lekidra will not even demand lentils for her pot. Again, the same detail, she's happy to just be married. And finally, the Gemara concludes with Tana Vakulim is Tana Vatos Babaleyam. Says the Gemara, another reason, you know why these women want to stay married? Not for good reasons. Because then they could go and they could be Mezane. And then when they have children, they'll say, oh, look, I'm married. It's from my husband. Quite a dreadful thing that these women could potentially do. And that's the end of part A of today's year. The fascinating Yisait of how much a woman craves to have a marriage. And now we continue on the first wide line in which the Gemara teaches us, Any woman that disqualifies the woman from being married, disqualifies the Kayin as well. Says the Gemara, Tanim learned to the Mishnah, Yisiba Aleim, and we add it on. And there are certain women, there are certain physical defects, which, although with regard to Kayanim, they do not, Say the Kayin is puzzle, but they are puzzle for a woman. Zeya, she excessively sweats. Vishuma, she has a mal. Vrechabe, she has bad breath. Vani bekani loy puzzle. He says, "Gemara, really? Do these really not puzzle by a Kayin?" But tonight we learn to the Mishnah is like in Vachel an elderly Kayin, a sick Kayin by Mezuam, or a Kayin that smells. He has a bad odor. It's actually not referring to a Kayin. Excuse me. It's referring to an animal, and we're showing that these three items puzzle as a mum for our carbon. Utanan, and we learned with regard to the, in the Mishnah, Mumen Eilu, Bein Bekum, Bein Eilu, Bein Psulim, Ba'adam. These Mumen, whether they pass or not, they pass by a person. So why are you telling me that these are specific to a woman? Explains the Gemara, I'm Rav Yosef, Chanino, Lakash, Kambazeo, Iveris, Kambazeo, Shena, Iveris. Says Rav Yosef, Chanino, the difference is, is it a smell, is it perspiration that passes by? That's if it's just temporary, then... It's considered a mum for marriage, but it does not mess up a kain. Ravashi Amar, another Terezeyam, Zoom Karamis. You ask the question on the case of perspiring to the case of the kain that's the carbon that smells. Excuse me. There in the case of the kain, it's not considered a mum, why not? Because he could put white wine vinegar on some for, form of primitive deodorant. In bed, brother, as well, after the knuckle of the make he put a pepper in his mouth. Since you're not doing that vaida 24 hours a day, there are ways that the Kayanim could figure out something to not smell or not have bad breath. However, says the Gemara, by a woman, it's impossible. You're together 24 hours a day. There's no way you can live life always with a pepper in your mouth. And that's the reason why we're saying with bad breath that it's considered a mum. And we continue now in explaining in the previous price that we said that a shuma, a mole, is considered a mum. Says the Gemara, what's the case of this mole? If this be sire, if the mole has hair growing out of it, all chavach apostle apostles both by a kain and a woman. If the less be sire, then ishuma gedayli achavach apostle apostles by both of its large. Ishuma gedani achavach alay apostle gedani. How do we know this? We learned in a price. Shuma shish bazar is a mum in bazar. If it has hair, it's a mum. If it does not have hair, gedayli is a mum gedani in a mum. Veizau gedayli bishav shem gamliel ad gezer ad alki. What's considered large? The size of an Italian coin. So what is? Going on, says the Gemara, you know what's going on? A small mole without hair, it's on her forehead. Says the Gemara, that's the mole Rav and Abaisu. What do you mean? The husband saw it and he didn't complain. So how can you tell me now that it's considered a mole that the husband could get rid of his marriage? 
Amar Papa, but Metzla Dachas Kiba Shal Raisha. The case is it's underneath her hat. Vizimdim is Chazia, Vizimdim is Chazia, and it's only visible sometimes, and that's going to be the case that the husband did not necessarily see it. So we consider a mole a mum by a marriage. Amar Rav Chista, another Taras High Milsa Migav Rav Shmiel Yemaner Rav Shila. I heard this from a great man. His name is Rav Shila. Noshchal Kelav and Asam Mikoyme Salakas. If a dog bit her and the area formed a scar. I raise a mom, that's a mom. I'm Rav Chizda, Kolav of Isha, I raise a mom, a thick voice, a manly voice, a woman is a, is a mom. Shlame Kelech, I raise a mom, that it says in regard to a woman that her voice is sweet. So if a woman's voice is not sweet, then it's considered a mom by a woman. And we continue with more women. We're about 20 lines to the bottom. The first one line is Shenemar at the two dots. Ram Nasan Bira, Bain Dade Isha Tefach. Another mom is if between the breasts of a woman, it's one Tefach large. That's called a mom. They thought that it meant that te- one tefach is desirable. More than a tefach, that's what it's a mom. But Amr the Ravashi got a movement on you. No, the opposite. We learned that a tefach is a mom. And how much, says the Gemara, and the opposite is attractive. How much is the appropriate spacement of the Dadeo Isha of the breast of a woman? Three fingers. Says Ram Nasser, continuing on the theme of woman of a woman. If a woman has such large dadim, bigger than the average normal size of a woman, that's called a mon. How large is that? If her dadim are a tefach larger than the average woman, then that's called a mon. Ask the Gemara so big. Is that possible? Says Gemara in Yes. Tamar Rabbi Rachana Yanir Isi Arbaich Zayso an Arabian woman Sheiv Shila Dadel Lachirel. She slung her breast over her shoulder Vinikas Bana and she nursed her son, pointing out to Gemara that it is a possibility to have a breast that large, but that will be a mum. And once we have one statement of Aisha, we quote another unrelated one. Latzion Yamer Yeshish Yulad Ba. The Sian will say, Man, man, you give birth to it. Vyuchananel. El Yahin, and it will be established on high. So, what is this referring to? See, and referring to two different people. It's equatable whether one was actually born in Sion in Yushalayim or one who just wants to be there, someone who aspires to be there. The Machshava itself puts him on the same level. Says Abaya, one person in Eretz Yisrael is greater than two of us in Babel. Says Rava, but no, one of us from Bavel that goes up to Eretz Yisrael is greater than even two of them. Says Rav Yemer, when we were over here in Bavel, we didn't know what the Rabbanim were saying. Rabbanim, they got smart from Eretz Yisrael. Perhaps some shot being that since they worked so hard in Bavel, when it was so difficult, they worked and worked and worked. So then when they came to Eretz Yisrael, they got the bracha, they got the Eretz Yisrael, the machkim, the Eretz Yisrael makes one smart, and they're even greater than those back in Bavel. So we go back into the Mishnah on the bottom of Ayin Ha'am and Be'i Aleph, continuing the theme of moment. Hayyubah moment v'aydu be'i If a woman has a moment, she's still in her father's house. Av sar lavi rayim mishan is arsa. Hayyubah moment halalu. If we find out that a woman has a mum after they already did Aresin, but she's still in her father's house, we remind ourselves that's what we learned, that which we learned many times that Bismar Chazal, that there was a large time period between Aresin and Nisuin. So what's going on over here is they did Aresin, and in that time period they realized, oh shoot, this woman has a mum. So says the Gemara, says the Mishnah, excuse me, if she's still in her father's house, then the father has to bring a raya that it was there all along. The father brings this proof that these defects, excuse me, the opposite. He brings proof that the defect came after Aresin. And it's your bad luck, he says to the husband. Because before you did Aresin, she didn't have this mom. It was only after Aresin that she received this mom. But next, there's just a bow. Once she enters into her husband's rishos, then the burden of proof is the other way. Habals are lovey raya. Shachlon is arsa yiba mumin. Then the bow has to bring your raya the opposite that before she did erisin, she already had the mum. So the difference is going to be on whom is the burden of whom is the burden of proof. Says the Mishnah again. If they found the mum while she was still in her father's house. 
The father brings the proof that it came after he was in, and it's the husband's tough luck. Nichlas just about if already was in the husband's rishos, then the husband has to bring a proof because now the mitzvah bechaver loverai is on him. He has to bring a proof that she had this mum all along. She had this mum even before they did erisin. And it's a mekach ta'is because she always had this mum that he didn't know about. Says the Chachamim, this whole Allah that we're discussing is only Mumin Shivas As we turn over to Ayin Hayam and Bays, only if the Mum is in a concealed, concealed area of the body, and therefore there was no way that the husband could have known about it. But if it's a revealed Mum, if it's a Mum on the external parts of her body, then the husband cannot say anything because he should have seen it already. And continues, Rav Meir. Excuse me, it continues the Chachamim. And if there, are, if there was a bathhouse in that city, then Abu Then even if it's a moment in a covered area of the body, the husband has no claim. Why not? Says the Gemishnam, they show bite Kabik Because the husband, before he gets married, should have asked his relatives who, who have seen this woman in the bathhouse to confirm that she has no moment. And therefore, there would be no potential taina in such a case. So says the Gemara, the Mishnah is a classical stira. We're going to begin this sugya today. And really, this is really tomorrow's sugya more. As if anyone peeks to the Davai involved, you'll see it's a short Ahmed. So tomorrow, we're really going to deal with this more. But let's at least begin it today. Taima de Maiseyav, right? We learned in the Mishnah that the husband pays, in the first case, the husband has to pay for the Ksuba. Why? If the father brings a proof that the mom came after Iris, and again, they found the mom while she's still in the father's house, said the Mishnah, the father has the burden of proof to prove that the mom was there all along, excuse me, that the mom came after Iris, and it's a husband's tough luck, and that would be the scenario, then the husband has to pay the Ksuba. Explains the Gemara and the Gemara's Medayik, five lines down, if the father does not bring such a proof, then Habal Mahamin. Then the husband is believed. Then in such a scenario, the husband's believed that to say that she had his mumul along and he does not have to pray, pay the ksuba. So Mani says the Gemara who she does this is Rabbi Yeshua he Dhamar Lami Pia Nuchayim says Rabbi Yeshua then a case of a woman that is Ma'ani, a woman that is forced to have relations, and she has a claim. We do not believe her claim. We don't believe when she was violated. This brings us back all the way to the beginning of Ksubis. We don't believe her to say, I was violated after the Erisin. And rather we believe the husband. So our Mishnah that says that the husband is believed unless the father brings a proof that the mom came after her is the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua. But I asked the Gemara, Ema Seifa, the end of the Mishnah says, Nichlas Elishas Abalth, Rabbi Yehuda, Elishas the husband, then Abalth, Zarech Lavi Raios. We have the classical, Diok, the classical inferences that contradict each other. So now from the Seifa, the Mishnah, we say, Time with the Maisi Abal Raio. Sounds like if the only when the Baal, the husband brought a proof, therefore he does not have to pay. Hola Maisi Abal Raio, then Amen, and then the fathers believe. Asra Avi Gamli, Al Damar Nemenes, that it says in a case where a woman is forced to have relations, that she is believed to say when it was. Similarly, it would transfer over to this case. That the father is believed. So says the Gemara, the contradiction in the Mishnah is in the cases of the inference. Do we say that a woman has credibility to believe when she was manis? And by translation in our case, who is the one that has the credibility, the father or the husband? So Amar Avalaz the first tarots, perhaps the easier tarots. Tavra, Misha Shanazu, Lo Shanazu. Says Ravalaz, are you right? There's a stira between the Mishnah, but the person who learned the first part of the Mishnah is not the person who learned the second part of the Mishnah, and therefore it doesn't bother us. Oh my, Rava comes like Rava, and Rava says, Lo team Rav Yeshua. Don't tell me, says Rava, that Rav Yeshua does not follow Lo Azobaz HaChazak and the Gufa Klau. When Rav Yeshua came along and said his din, don't tell me that he argues 100% that we never go after the Chazak of the Gufa. That's only in a scenario where the Cheskas Mamoin opposes the Chazak of the Gufa. That's when Rabbi Yeshua goes with the Chazak of the Mamma. But if there's no Chazak, then also Rabbi Yeshua goes with the Chazak of the Gufa. Then Rabbi Yeshua indeed goes after the Chazaka of the body. 
The Itanya, as we learned in our Bryce, in Baharis, because they are love on if the Bahar is the type of Saraski before the white hair, Tommy, she's Tommy. If they are love, we go to the Bahar is Tar. So fake, we're not sure, Tommy. Ravi Shua, Imer, call. What's call? My call. Amar Abba, call, Tar. That if it dimmed, then it is Tar. So what do we see? We see Rabbi Yeshua holds that we do go after the chazak of the body to say it's tar in the case of a suffolk. So that just clarifies the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua that since the body never had saras, she had a, the person had a chazkas taira, and now we're not sure. Says Rabbi Yeshua, b'safik, then kof it dimmed. We assume that we go with the chazaka and she continues to be tar. But now we go back to the Mishnah. We go back to the original question of the Mishnah that the first part of the Mishnah seemingly goes with Yeshua and the second part goes with Rav Gamliel. So Rava Amar Anu Taretz which really we're just going to read the words of Rava we're going to pick up from this because it's really going to flow into tomorrow's daf. Says Rava Risha Kan Vinimsa Kan Ayo Seif Anami Kan Vinimsa Kan Vinimsa Uve Kan Ayo In the Risha Kan Risha Kan Vinimsa they found it there and therefore we assume it to be there all along. Whereas in the Seifa, Kan Nimsu, we found it over here, we assume it to be there all along. What's the difference? Let's just explain Rava quickly. I'll pick it up from here tomorrow. Says Rava, in the first case where they discuss when do they find the mom when she's still in the father's house. Some we say they found her, they found the mom in the father's house. We assume it was there all along, even before Aresin. And therefore, the father's claim is not strong enough. And therefore... The, he's not going to collect the Ksuba. Whereas in the Seifa, when did they find the mom after she already left the father and came into the husband's Rishos? Then we assume that's where the Chazak is. That's where they found them and that's where they assume to be. And therefore the Chazak on the body is strong enough to say that the husband has to pay the Ksuba. So basically it's a difference of where the syllable lies. Where do we assume that the Chazaka is? That's the way that Rava explains the apparent steer on the Mishnah. We're going to stop over here because this is really going to take us into tomorrow's daf, in which Rava.